也非常热闹，大家也是在释放很多的这个活动。Um, so after six and a half hour uh, ride, changing from Shaolin to uh, Quanzhou and then Quanzhou to Anxi, Anxi, then finally Changkeng, I'm now at um, Changkeng, uh, which is the the uh, one of the biggest area for uh, Keguanyin. But th these are all villages, so with within like ten minutes walk, you can go from villages to villages, and. Uh, <laughs> I'm here with three very curious ladies. Uh, they are just called for a job. They want, uh, they're needed for basically um, somebody has a batch of uh, machine cut uh, tea leaves that needs to be uh, hand picked. So the ones that machine could not tell if it's good leaves or not leaves can be left out. And I just want to take a quick shot, see how foggy it is, the mountains. Uh, <laughs> Far away. By the way, they've been talking about me all the way, and then I don't, I don't really understand what they're talking about because we speak different dialects. And uh, this is a very rural area. Most of the places I've been to, even though they have their local dialect, they all speak uh, Mandarin. But they, uh, one of the ladies speak a little bit, and uh, the other two don't. Uh, so that's. That's the city of uh, Anxi. Now we're at the. Hey, this side is Anxi, right? Yes, Oh, wow! It's actually really huge. Uh, so this area also produced tea. Of course, where I was, the uh, it's under the uh, jurisdiction of Anxi, the city of Anxi. Anxi is actually not even a city. Uh, it, it looks huge, but in China, this is called like a secondary city. And they also produce tea around here, but it's, it's much. Uh, the quality is not very good. Uh, and this river is So Anxi literally means peaceful. Lanxi. 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 So Anxi means peaceful creek, and that's the name of this one actually. It's called the Blue Creek. So Anxi is named after this. It's more like a river. Uh, I have to say, if it's just uh, this kind of leveled tea fields, this is the most beautiful um, I've ever seen. This is this is not real, almost. The villages right here. I know this is probably what most people perceive as how the tea farmers live because a lot of the places people don't, the farmers don't really live close to uh, where the teas are because there's high mountains and this is very well cultivated area so it's not level, it's on the mountain but oh my god the fog and, and this super old house here is, is amazing. Uh, by the way, today it's very, uh, it was, it's been raining all morning and now uh, it's still very misty so people are not plugging tea. It's, it's very important that you do not plug any uh, wet tea leaves because they cannot be used. So I passed the scary dog. <laughs> Look at this. Oh my god, this is amazing. <sighs> this is the best whatever soup for your soul. Rice fields there. Oh, so beautiful. This is the wife of uh, Mr. Su. <laughs> he, she just went to uh, pluck some uh, bamboo shoes. Look how tender they are. This is much smaller than the ones I saw. Um, in uh, South Shaolin. This is very small. This is not 
So now the sun is out, and uh, this is the first sunny day in a while, and so they can uh, start plugging teas again. It's, uh, it's, it's already early in the afternoon, so they're all kind of start hiring people and uh, uh, calculating the, the hourly rate. So hopefully they'll make tea again. So, so the farmers are really worried because this year the production is really, really low. Um, and the, these ones, because it's been raining for the past three days, uh, two days actually, but uh, this batch here is going to grow out. It's going to be too old to be made into good tea within five days. So if it, the weather like this continues, then um, yeah, they don't have much to sell. <laughs> he was saying that you should film all this, it's pretty. Now, in the past few years, it's been like It's been like this for several years already. So that's why good tea's price is always very high. I mean, there's so many factors plays into it. If they don't want, they can always just uh, pluck the tea leaves and make it into uh, crappy tea. Then they can sell it. But uh, Uncle Su was just laughing at me. I was asking him, what, what's this tree and what's this one? Uh, and he was like, oh, you don't know what it is. So this is a plum tree and this is a peach tree. Many people say that the leaf of Tie Guan Yin looks very much like a uh, um, peach tree's leaf. So let's pick one and go compare. Mm. I'm gonna walk down this way. Now let's compare to see. This is a peach tree leaf. Many say the Tiguanin's leaf looks like a peach tree's leaf, so let's compare. By the way, um, in this batch, some of them still has the buzz. You can see, right? It's pink or purple in Chinese color naming. Uh, it's, it's more like a brownish color. Over here we can see how rocky uh, this area is. So again, he loves uh, this kind of soil that's a little more uh, towards the S's side. It's the, the color is red. Uh, it's more yellowish, but it can't be too red. If it's too red, it's not good. Um, look how foggy it is. And then the rocks, tea loves rocks. Even though here there's no concept as cliff tea, but it, the principle is the same. This is why this area is one of the best areas here. So these are the very young tea trees. They can already be plugged. This area also uh, belongs to Mr. Su or Uncle Su. <laughs> so this is this area. Um, the this is or uh, all organic, by the way. They use, uh, uh, especially his son, who really want to start doing uh, tea the traditional way. So they're starting to plant it uh, the organic way and also um, making tea guanyin the, the way people used to do, where they actually uh, leave the tea outside instead of in conditioned rooms to do that. Uh, I don't know if you... I can hear but there's a little goat there. He's so cute! Oh yeah, he's running away. He's another little one. Thank you for your mommy. So now um, it's almost the end of the day, so there's this lady who's driving all the uh, goats downhill. Uh-oh! 
<laughs> They're coming my way. <laughs> Shit. Come on. What's that? Oh, shit. Oh, okay. Now they're going that way. <laughs> I was chased by a matchup goat. By the way, this lady is not very friendly. I think he thought, she thought I was a thief or something. Oh, and we see this, this one is actually, it's, it's fully grown now. It's already taken a tree shape. Uh, oh, I really want to get some of these fresh tea leaves and to make tea, try and use this batch. I think it's going to taste really good. This one is it going to taste better? This one is going to taste better. <laughs> he also agrees that if it's actually uh, picked in and made tea, it should taste really good. But yeah. So here are some ladies already actually working on plucking tea. Yeah, I gotta be careful because. Hi, <laughs> So they sit on the little stool and they <laughs> So this lady here is brushing the tea leaves. <laughs> Yeah, they, they all like stop talking, stop everything whenever when I'm filming. Um, this will help the tea leaves to dry faster. Uh, well, we're still finding people who are already started plugging. This lady also with a brush joining to help. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully, we'll find somebody who already started. Um, depends on the region if it receives more sunlight. Because the sun's been out for a couple of hours already. So if they. Uh, it's at a good spot, it's dry enough, they start plugging. Back down here again, uh, as you can see, more people came out, and this is a machine cut field. Uh, the well, um, I filmed the first night I was here. <laughs> Sorry, I'm burping. Start over. Um, so the first night when I was here, that was a batch. They were making a batch of machine cut teas. Uh, the machine cut teas, there's no. I would say they they need. Um, the thing about machine cut teas is that it's uneven. And you don't know. And then they, um, uh, so they need to have uh, somebody to uh, pick out the uh, the teas, uh, the the longer stems. It's also actually, the tea quality is not going to be good, the yield will be lower, um, but the production will be high. That means the yield for good tea. There's a trench line behind me, you should be careful to not fall down. Now what we see um, in these things, uh, as you can see, they look very familiar, uh, but these ones are made uh, with bamboos. They, this is a very important process in the making of uh, Tae Guan Yin. Uh, this lady just came in with some vegetables. Um, because, I mean, it's, it's, it's also important in uh, making club tea, but this is a vital process in making uh, Tae Guan Yin. They don't heat it, it's just, they just uh, roll it, basically. It's, uh, it's through this process that uh, gives that you can control uh, some of the fermentation level of the tea leaves and also let the flavor come out from the outside as, uh, from the inside. I mean, it also happens when you roll the tea, but this is also very important. Let's take a look at over here. So they repeat the process. So they let it spin. Um, it takes several minutes, and then after that. Uh, they let the tea ferment again. It's also a repeating process. It depends on the ferment, how, what fermentation level you want. 
uh, your tea to be. There are many, so basically you're going the, uh, there are many fermentation levels that can be customized and it can take from uh, a day to two days. By the way, it looks very easy that they, they shake the tea until all the leaves expand. It is actually pretty hard. Um, here they're starting another batch. Now, this room smells amazing. Um, by the way, it used to be really dark here. Um, so this is a, a temperature controlled room. This is where the tea ferments. Uh, with tea guanyin, even the light is fermented. Um, it takes about, oh, where's the light? Okay, it takes about um, 18 hours. Most of the time it's 24 hours on. Sometimes it's 48 hours. And after fermentation, next step is where they cook the tea. And the farmers told me that they, the tea leaves will uh, feel smoother and smoother as it ferments. Of course, I cannot tell. <laughs> now we're cooking the tea. <laughs> now, after they cook the tea, now, <laughs> this is very similar to um, the Kung Fu Red Tea making process called Da Dai, but I, I want to know like why they are doing this. Uh, so with this process, there are many tea leaves that um, became dead during the fermentation process, like this one. Remember, tea is a living product. It's, it, it cannot be dead. If it's dead, then it has to be half dead, basically. Uh, when they say the water is not coming out enough, or they say the tea is too alive, uh, that's also not good. But with this one, the tea is dead, so it's not going to taste good. When they beat the tea using that machine, this thing will, will fall off, and then this one will filter it out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so basically he was saying the same thing, so this is what I saw in Taiwan as well. The tea dust here um, come out, it's really cheap, sells for like two RMB uh, a kilo, no half a kilo. And then they, um, he was saying that basically the tea bags that you're drinking in the hotels all come from this. So I asked him to repeat that, he said, ah, no. <laughs> um, so we had three brews of the tea. Now what they're doing now here is um, all the tea buyers, they always say that uh, the tea is only okay. So they're basically arguing. Obviously if he's not interested at all, he'll just walk away. Uh, so what happens is basically you need to know what you're talking about. You can... Oh. <laughs> So they always say, ah, it's only okay, and so but they're negotiating price, so he'll pick out the flaws of the tea, and the farmers will argue uh, why it's good. So they're basically negotiating the price. Uh, he's saying that this is not good, that is not good, so this is the price I'll pay, and the farmers is like, no, this is very good, this is that, and um, try to uh, ask for a higher price. 
跑到外面去了，糊弄那些不会的。<笑>这个我们如果是高档的和这个高档的和中低档的差别不是大，差别一点点。嗯嗯嗯，是。所以这个只要是遇到稍微一点的变化，果敢它单偏差地点。是是是。是。啊，这个大部分。So this is the tea that we just、uh, made. Really, after it's it finishes process, it's already tea, even though the flavor is, I mean. There are many processes to make it uh, fine tea, but in this stage, it's already drinkable. Uh, very similar to cliff tea we saw, even though it's, it's it's different, but the concept is the same. And he was also saying that uh, so this is a sailor basically. He travels around the world. Uh, I mean, his his son, he he follows the uh, like the cargo ship. He works on a cargo ship, so he doesn't get to get off the ship often, but. Uh, in uh, technically, he's traveled around the world, <laughs> and he was also saying that um, it's kind of like fine wine. The really bad tea and, and good tea is easy to tell, but good tea to super good tea is it's hard to tell. And um, yeah, people who don't understand tea think that they're all the same. <laughs>